here we go. It is week 14 best bets video and I am jacked up. Let's get this started. This is the best video of the week in my opinion. I love it. We're going to give you guys some more winners. Ryan, are we ready? Are we ready to go? We are ready to go. Yep. Let's do this. Let's do it. Hey, uh, before we start, please hit like and subscribe. Appreciate everybody following along. Somehow we doubled our TikTok followers in one day. So all I have to say to that is thank you, thank you, thank you. That is awesome. Lots of comments, especially on the NBA videos. Um, it's been a lot of fun talking NBA with people and giving out some winning bets. We're on a roll with NBA right now. So that's where we're at tonight. We're going to cover a little, uh, or today we're going to cover Sunday Night Football, Monday Night Football game, and then give you our best bets for the week. We have six of them, I believe. So here we are. I can't believe it's week 14 already, but this is where we're at. We got five weeks left, and then it's the NFL playoffs. It's crazy, crazy to think about. But before we dive into the primetime games, let's talk about the game we just saw for a little bit. Uh, that Thursday night game, holy cow. Baker Mayfield's the GOAT. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. Like, he's just the greatest of all time. What do you think? Oh, I'd for sure. Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp on Undisputed. They are going to be talking uh, Baker Mayfield all day long, and I'm going to Tune in and watch. Skip's awesome when he goes on tangents about Bakerfield. He's completely wrong. He's not a good quarterback. He can't do anything right, it seems like, except he won this game. And, man, the Raiders really just choked this one away. That was terrible. You don't lose to the Rams like that. Uh, Thursday no. night games, still, like, they're tough. Like, they just – I'm glad it got exciting at the end, but that was a boring game. Like, again, yeah. primetime Thursday night yeah. sucks games. I, I agree. Uh I will say betting wise, I was on a roll last weekend, won all three podcast bets. And then I try to give you guys a primetime bet every week. Sunday night football comes out, I give you a bet. Monday night football comes out, give you one. And now Thursday night. But I have been cold on the primetime games lately. It's because they're hard to bet. It's, they're just hard to bet. We had Mac Hollins over three and a half catches at minus 125 tonight. Okay. He's gotten over that three games in a row. It's He's getting used more in the offense. I thought, you know what? It's a little juicy at minus 125, but let's go with it. And guess what? He gets two catches. Do you know why? Because Derek Carr only completed 11 freaking passes. 11. Like, if I knew that before the game, Derek's like, hey, buddy, just before you get out your bet, I'm only going to complete 11 tonight. I'm not going to bet Mac Hollins. That's not on you, Mac Daddy. That's on your freaking quarterback. Now, back to this game. Uh, Derek Carr and that offense, they got conservative, and uh, I think they had thought they had it in the bag. This is a season-ending loss for the Raiders. Mm -hmm. um, for whatever chance they thought they had, it is now over, and I think they felt it. They looked devastated after that loss. When you let Baker Mayfield and Tutu Atwell and Van Jefferson beat you, like, just be done. It's time to go fishing. It's time to go on vacation. The season is toast. I think they're five and eight now. Say goodnight to the Raiders. Thursday night games are freaking weird. I should just stick with my under that I always think these games are going to be because that's what they end up being. So that's the Thursday night game. I don't need to talk about that anymore. I, don't, I hate betting Rams games because I have no idea what to expect out of Rams. The, the whole team, really. So Prime time Sunday night football. This one is a good game. I'm excited to talk about it. I do not have a best bet in this game. Uh, I can tell you where I'm going to lean. I don't think Ryan has a best bet in this game, but uh, it's the Dolphins minus three right now at the Chargers. Here's what I'm going to say about this game. The Chargers are on life support right now. They they this is a absolute must win for the Chargers. I think they're 500 right now, and if they lose this, I mean, you're under 500 in AFC. It's just not looking pretty. And uh, I'm telling you this, everything is heading towards Brandon Staley being fired. It will happen. I promise you that. It's just a matter of when. Um, Waddle in this game is questionable, which could be a huge loss for Miami. They need him. Uh, but a big loss is safety Derwin James is questionable also. Here's where I lean in this game. Uh, there's going to be a lot of freaking points. Let me just say that. Dolphins defense, not that great. Chargers defense, not very good at all. Over-unders, 51.5. I can see this being 30 to 27, you know what I mean, type of game, easily. I can see both teams in the 30s. Um, Chargers give up five and a half yards of carry. Five and a half. So you hand the ball off, five and a half. Hand it off, five and a half. Um, first down. And that's, first but, down. Yeah, first, exactly. Before, you don't even need a third down. Nope. And so that's dead last in the NFL. And they also give up 28 points a game at home. Yeah, that's a good home defense by the Chargers. So – 
you just know the Dolphins are going to get to, you know, 27, 30, 33 in this game. It's just a matter of, you know, the Chargers can keep up. So I, I like the over in this game if I had to bet it, but it's not a best bet. What do you, what do you think about this one, Ryan? I think you're right as far as Staley. He's going to definitely be canned uh, by the end of this year or at the end of this year. Uh, it sucks that half the team struggled with injuries this year, but it still seems like they're just underperforming. Whether it's Herbert, uh, you know, Austin Eckler, the receivers, it's it just had so much more potential. And I think it's a lot of with, to do with the coaching, and you're right with there. Um, but the thing I am excited about this is Tua and Herbert look like AFC uh, starting quarterbacks or star quarterbacks in the AFC. Maybe not like top tier star uh, Herbert is, but not Tua quite yet. But I mean, they're just yeah. excited. To, or it's, it's exciting to keep seeing these guys or continuing to watch these guys in the AFC moving forward um, and kind of battle it out. Hopefully playoffs down the road and things like that. And just young AFC quarterbacks just going at it. Um, two good teams. Uh, yeah, just yeah, just the injuries, I, I Staley. Then the defense is scoring. One another thing. I'm glad that we finally are into like the flex schedule for the Sunday night football games. Because if we would have got yes. another, you know, Broncos or just another lame duck for a primetime game, that that's terrible. These are two games. That, they're two teams that you want to see on TV and have fun and watch, and not just be like, let's turn this because it's over. So that's one thing I'm super I, pumped about. I agree. Sunday night football from here on out should be pretty dang good games. It, like he said, if I have to watch Russell Wilson play again, I'm going to blow my brains out because he is terrible. And I think it was chiefs Broncos that got flexed out. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, this is nice to see. So this is a great game. Like you said, two young up and coming quarterbacks. If you want to see points and great offenses and just not great defenses, this is the game for you. So that should be exciting. I lean over. You got any leans on this one? Dolphins minus three or over under or anything? Eh, I don't want to give out anything quite yet because we got the Sunday night IG TikTok thing. So I'll, I'll keep you guys. Ooh, curious. a little tease they call in the business. Oh, there's another word for that in the business. I don't know. I haven't been in the business long enough to know. But that's a tease. Okay. Yep. Uh, I, I lean over. But yeah, we'll see where we're at. We're going to give out a bet for that on Sunday during the day. So Monday night football. We don't need to talk about this game as long. Because it's the Patriots at the Cardinals. Whew, let me tell you. Uh, let me just go through my stuff real quick. Patriots have played three primetime games this year. They lost all three of them. Just really putting up good performances. Um, I think I think overall, the wrong team is favored in this. Patriots minus one and a half. The wrong team's favored. The Cardinals are getting healthier. That doesn't mean they're a great team. But they're getting healthier, and I just think they're going to be able to put up more points in this anemic offense that the Patriots have. Uh, the Cardinals finally have Hollywood Brown and Hopkins on the field for the entire game this upcoming weekend. Hopefully they can both stay healthy. But that's that's a great duo with Kyler Murray. I think they're going to be able to, you know, put up enough points against this Patriots defense. And, you know, the Cardinals defense is okay, but I, I just don't think the Patriots are any good right now. So... I, I don't really have a lean one way or the other, other than I think the Cardinals money line might be a good option. Um, you know, I don't have the odds in front of me, probably plus, you know, like 120 or something about even money. But uh, yeah, what, what do you think about this Monday night game? I got one thing, and it's a pretty easy one. Both teams are inconsistent, and that's what you can guarantee. Like, they're just very inconsistent teams. One or two mm -hmm. weeks go by, and you're like, ooh, they're starting to figure it out, they get going, and then they throw up two clunkers. Or the other way, they got two clunkers, and you're like, okay. Now they figured it out. They just suck. They're bad teams. And they have two like two good performances. So they're just really super inconsistent. Not sure what you're ever going to get, which makes it super hard to bet. Uh, and it could be a great game to watch. It could be both teams uh, playing well, good football, you know, good defense with the Patriots against the Cardinals and everything. Or it could go the other way and both kind of have a clunker of a game and another bad Monday night football game. Hopefully not. Want to watch some good football. Uh, but inconsistency is what's hurt both these teams pretty bad because I felt, like I said, there's mid times where they look like, okay, now they got it going. They got it figured out. Mac mm -hmm. Jones, Kyler Murray. And then I don't know. I just don't get it. Doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. I know one reason They're, why one of their coaches to... sucks. The other coach is a good coach, but one coach. Sucks, yeah. Belichick, so Belichick does suck. I agree. He's awful. Yeah. <laughs> agree. Kingsbury is about to be fired again. I don't know how he's still the coach. He shouldn't make it to the end of the season. I don't know what they're waiting for. Um, Here's what I'm going to say is you are accurate. They are consistently inconsistent. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Do my people follow me on that one? Consistently inconsistent. Both these teams. This can be hard to bet. More than likely not to give away a little tease. I'm probably giving a player prop in this game. I don't know what yet, but uh, <laughs> betting a side or an over under in this game is a nightmare. 
In fact, just thinking about betting this game in general is a nightmare. But it's Monday Night Football, and people are going to be looking for bets. And again, I say it all the time, I'm here for the people. I'm here for the Jabo community, the Just a Bet Outside group. I'm here for you. Hopefully we get you a winner. All right, Ryan, you obviously have no lean in this game because they both, uh, you don't know what team you're getting from either. I just, no, I don't know what I'm going to get, and I don't want to lean a direction just because I don't want to just give out nothingness. It's just, they're too inconsistent for me. I agree. You mean like my Thursday night bet tonight, nothingness? Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) All right, uh, real quick, we're going to do best bets here in just a second. I know you've been waiting for it. You want some winners. You're going to win some money. But before, I just have to make a few notes about this week. There are seven divisional games. I mean, it is that time of the year where they pack the end of the schedule up with all these divisional games. They're hoping that these are huge games, and some of them are, some of them aren't. Um, Jets-Bills is a big one, and I got a best bet on that game, and Ryan has a best bet on that game, so we're going to get to that. But a game we're not, we don't have a best bet on, but want to mention real quick is Eagles at Giants. Uh, Eagles are minus seven right now in New York. You know, seven to me is a lot of points on the road in a divisional game. Jalen Hurts was awful in New York last year. He threw three picks, and it was just ugly. Um, I know they're a much different team this year. But I, I lean the Giants plus seven if I had to on that one. But I, probably what I like the best out of this game is the under 44 and a half. I think this is a 2017 game written all over it. And uh, I, I just think these guys know each other divisional. It's going to be just a, you know, a battle. And the Giants' pass rush is improving a little bit with Thibodeau and those guys. So what do you think about this one? I would probably lean the Eagles just because the Giants have been struggling all year with injuries. Barkley's now on the injury list, watch list, neck injury. He's most likely going to play, but it just, it's been a tough year injury-wise for the Giants' offensive line, everything. And the Eagles have really stayed pretty healthy, dominant roster, and I think they can get a win. Yes, it's a divisional game, but I think they'll cover the spread. Um, pretty easily, honestly, but I would lean under like you're like you're saying too. So um, I can definitely see being low scoring, but I can see this Eagles winning by ten. So I would definitely go there. Hurts yep. is just unstoppable. The running game, all of it. They're just they got so many weapons. Yeah, yeah the O line, D line should be dominated uh, in the trenches by Philadelphia for sure. Um, here's another note I have for you because this you just gotta know these stats. And when people ask you where you know these stats. You can take credit for it if you want. You don't even have to say, oh, you know, I heard it on Just About Outside podcast. No, it's okay. I'll tell you it. When teams are favored by 17 or more in the last decade, okay, it's happened 15 times. Team is favored by 17 or more. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the Cowboys minus 17 and a half this week against the Texans. That is a freaking humongous spread. And you think, do you, you ever wonder, like, do teams cover that many points? Which means, do they win by, you know, 18 or more points? They do. They are 12-3 and three against the spread. 12 of the 15 games where they have this big of a spread are won and covered by the favorite. Wild to me. So, if you just blindly bet the percentages on that, you're going to go Cowboys minus 17 and a half. I am not betting that freaking game. Because if the Cowboys are up 23 and I'm still sweating my bet, it's just not a bet for me. You know what I mean? It's just not happening. It's like, oh, God, if they give up a touchdown with two seconds left, we've all been there. It ain't happening. Anyways, that's what I got. We're good. Any other games you want to talk about? Are you ready to dive into some best bets? I just like how you brought up that last one about the Cowboys and Texans. I mean, that when the bets came out, that was like one of the first things we talked about was like, wow, mm-hmm. that spread is huge. And I was like, oh, I got to yeah. take the Texans then, at least in that. And then you come up with this stat. I'm like, oh, uh, never mind. Not a chance. Like, yeah, stay away. And yeah. like you're saying, don't want to sweat when you're 23 zero type of game and you get scored on the last second yeah. or touchdown last yeah. second. It's, like, it's terrible. It's like Dolphin, Dolphins Texans was like 15 Dolphins up 30 to zero and they went 30 to 15 or something like it was just like you just don't know, you know, resting starters, all that. Yep. Deep breath. It is time. The best time of the week. If I didn't mention it already, we are going to be giving out player props on Saturday. We've been doing it every weekend. It's been working for us. The props aren't out yet. They're taking longer and longer to release those, those, uh, those sneaky little sports books and everyone. So uh, we're going to release them Saturday. We've won four in a row on those, so stay tuned for that. We're on a roll. But right now, there's no player props. It is best bets, week 14, NFL time. dun da 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 Yeah! Buddy, you got three. I got three. Start us out, Ryan. Let's do it. Yeah. 
My first one is going to be the over 44 Panthers and Seahawks at minus 110. Man, it took me a little bit to come up with this one, but after I saw it, I was like, wait a second. The Seahawks can't play any defense. It doesn't matter who they're playing against. They just truck lanes for running lanes, and that's what the Panthers like to do. They can hit a couple big ones. Uh, Seahawks, very most of the time, they are over their scores uh, on the spreads. Like It's a bunch, like 50s and 60s, and just it's unreal. Uh, I think the Panthers can score now because the Seahawks defense, and with Kenneth Walker being out, the Seahawks are going to have to pass the ball a little bit more, which means the clock stops every now and then, keeps the game going a little bit longer, you can get up more points, and you're more likely to hit a big play from a passing game than you are from a running game. So with the over at 44, I was like, yep, I'm taking that. I can see that 27-30 Seahawks type of thing, and uh, that, that hits the over for us. So I'm going to go there with my first bet. I love it. And if you can see behind us on the field, I think someone just scored on us again. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did. Yep. Oh, crap. <laughs> Another touchdown we gave up. A wide open hole. Yeah. Okay. I like it, obviously, as I just talked about Seahawks D right there. Um, yeah, we don't we don't play many low scoring games. It's been like two under that total since September. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's it's over or nothing in that one. So I like the first bet. Here we go. My first bet. 49ers minus three and a half against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We have everyone to, everyone, I hope you're all sitting down for this one. Okay. I am taking Brock Purdy minus three and a half against Tom Brady. And I, I am. And, and look at my eyes. Do I look scared about it? I'm not at all. Why is that? Because the Buccaneers roster is freaking horrendous. The 49ers are minus three and a half. They're saying that with Brock Purdy, a guy who looked great last week, right? I'm not saying he's going to be great every week, but he looked great when he came in last week as a rookie, came in off the bench and played maybe even better than Jimmy G. They're saying if you get two and a half points for a home field advantage, they're saying the 49ers are a one point better team than the Buccaneers. Nobody in their right mind thinks that no matter if it's Jimmy G or Brock Purdy, Jimmy G, it's not like this spread was probably about six or seven before Jimmy G went down. Jimmy G's were not worth that many points, guys. Jimmy G is not, it's not like he's replacing a superstar quarterback. This Buccaneers team until like five minutes left in the game against the Saints last week had three points, I believe. Right? Then they have three. I yeah. mean, they were awful. They suck on offense. They've been consistently crappy on offense. The only game they looked okay is against the Seahawks in Germany because the Seahawks defense sucks. This line is way too low. I cannot believe it's not six or seven. Uh, 49ers have the best defense in the league. Buccaneers have been one of the worst offenses in the league. It's in San Francisco. I don't understand this line at all. Give me Brock Purdy over Tom Brady because Brady has sucked all year. So if you're one of those people that keep waiting for Brady to do better, oh, I can't bet against Brady. Why not? If you did, you'd be freaking awesome almost most of the year. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. This team, it's not even close. The O-line is a mess for the Buccaneers. And guess what the 49ers are pretty good at? Getting to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. Bosa is going to just annihilate Brady. Brady knows it. He's waiting for it. He said something on Instagram. Um, tagging him or something, saying "be easy" on Sunday. Like he just knows he knows he's coming. It's not pretty. Um, also, the the Buccaneers. The only way they can really score points is when they really get that running game going, like you saw against Seahawks. So they can work that out the play action and hit Godwin and Evans. Uh, 49ers are elite versus opposing running backs, catching out of the backfield, stopping them in the run game. They are elite, elite, elite. So it is going to be all on Tom Brady against the dynamite pass rush and the number one defense in the league. I don't care if his name is Jesus, Tom Brady, anything you want to name it. They are going down, and I can see this game being a freaking blowout. Brock Purdy, take care of the ball and get the ball to your weapons. That's all you have to do. Just don't turn the ball over left and right. 49ers by 100. Lock that in, minus 110. You're up. A hundred, huh? Wow. A hundred. <laughs> That's a lot. Oh, uh, no. Thank I think, you. yeah. And Brock Purdy, he's getting praised by his teammates. They're loving him in the locker room and think he can really sling it. So that helps to have a confident Good senior point. team. So, and by the way, their quote was, what was their quote? It was, uh, you you would think he's Peyton Manning with the way he's holding himself. Not exactly arm talent, but in regards to confidence and just how he came into the game, he's just ready to lead a team. Um, this is not a guy who played one year in college. 
he played like 15 years in college, it feels like. I forgot what it was. He had like 40-something games or something like that in college. So he has experience. I know that's not NFL, but he's not one of those young guys that is just like doesn't play a lot. So, all right, enough about that. Give me your second bet. Yep, second bet. We're going to go under 44 for Chiefs Broncos at minus 110. This Broncos offense is terrible. Just awful. It doesn't matter if they're playing a bad defense, good defense. Russell Wilson cannot move the football down the field and score points. They're just going to kick field goals. And the Chiefs, if they're going to get up into a big lead, which they can, say if they still score 21, something like that, Broncos 6, Broncos 9, like it's not even close type of situation. Plus, they'll they'll run the football. They, they're, they'll take their foot off the gas. Most teams do. I don't understand it. You should keep playing hard and put teams away. We've seen too many teams come back. But that's what the NFL people do. I get it. You don't want to get somebody hurt. So I can see the Chiefs kind of throwing it back, easy completions, get the clock running, and just get out of there and get a win um, in a very low-scoring game. Unfortunately, it's going to be low-scoring. At the beginning of the season, as much as I didn't like Russ and all the, everything, I still wanted to see a good game Chiefs, you know, Broncos, battle it out, AFC West, playoffs, all that. And... Uh, now we're just waiting to see if uh, Russell Wilson could score more touchdowns than he has bathrooms in his house. I mean, that's the big thing going right now. And he's still way under, so the bathrooms are looking good there. <laughs> Something yeah, they seen are. And had to talk about <laughs> it. It's just funny as heck. So, yeah. yeah. Going Chiefs under 44 or Chiefs Broncos under 44 at minus 110. <laughs> I love it. And by the way, I think the Broncos are have gone under the total in their games mm, in mm-hmm. every game except one. Every game except one has gone under the total. They're an under machine. They are printing money on the unders in Bronco games. So why not do it again? Total still in the mid 40s. Let's do it. I love it. Russ is so bad. He is he is the most consistently bad quarterback I've ever seen. Like he yeah. he he's not even we've talked about it enough. I actually still thought he was gonna have some good games here and there. He, he is so consistently bad. You just know, like he's not surprising anybody. You know he's gonna be bad. You know what I mean? Like even a broken clock is right two times a year or two times a day. You know what I mean? Like it, it, Russell sucks. He's not even a broken clock is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You follow me on that? You follow yeah, me on I that? think okay. he had like maybe one good game, like passing. I don't even know if they won the game, but his game was okay. You don't expect that out of a quarterback getting paid as much no. as he is. <laughs> no, I like the bet. I love it. Chiefs 30 to 10 even. Right. Under. Yeah. 27 13. If you really think the Broncos are feeling themselves with 13 <laughs> points. All right. My second bet. It's back to team total time, baby. Team total time. The alliteration I have is amazing. Lions. The Detroit Lions. Team total over 26 and a half at minus 115. This might go up a little bit. Um, you can take 27 if you got better odds. I like 26 and a half because 27 is a key number. I think they're getting in the 30s. So in reality, I don't think it matters. But, you know, if you can get 26 and a half, I would do it. The Vikings, the Vikings, the Vikings. Let's just talk about this game real quick. The Vikings are underdogs in Detroit. Underdogs in Detroit. Vegas is trying to trick you. So be careful. I'm not going to take the spread in this game. But be very careful. Because if I did, I would take the Lions minus two and a half. I'm not scared. Vegas is trying to just build another resort by you taking the Vikings. Because why is a 10-win team an underdog to a 5-win team? It's because they're practically the same team that has had bad luck and good luck at the end of games. Don't even disagree with me, Ryan. I don't want to talk about your Vikings, but I'm going to only in the bad way right here. Dead last in pass defense, the Vikings. Dead last. Have you ever seen a 10-win team dead last in pass defense? This one. They're giving up the most yards per game by like seven than anyone else in the NFL. It is unbelievable. And I don't think pass yards are the end all be all, but if you look at yards per pass attempt and everything else, they're at the bottom. It's, it's ugly. Okay. Here's the last four games for the lions points wise, right? We just need 27 or higher. Stay with me here. 31 points versus the bears. Is that over? Yes. 31 points versus the giants. Is that over? Yes. Is the giants defense also better than the Vikings? Yes. 25 points versus the Bills. Barely under versus a top five defense on Thanksgiving Day, if you all remember that game. Barely under. And then they played the Jaguars last week. Oh, the poor Jaguars. And they scored 40. 
This Lions team is freaking moving. Jared Goff, as long as he's not playing outside, he's good. I mean, he's solid. He sucks outside <laughs> or in cold weather. But uh, he's at home. Lions team total over 26 and a half. I almost made this my best bet of the week, but instead I'm making my last bet the bet of the week. That's where I'm at. Lock that one in. You're up. All righty. So with that, best bet of the week. This is my last one. That's where I'm at. Best bet of the week. Here we go. We got Giants plus 10 at minus 110 for best bet of the week out of me. Uh, it's a divisional game. There's not much scoring happens in those games, tight games, close games. And the Jets are a good team. Like, how do you how do you plus 10 with a good team? I get it. The Bills are a good team, too. But they've been inconsistent. And the Jets play defense. All that white. He's been an okay quarterback or a decent quarterback for him. And that's all you got to be is decent for plus 10. Like, really? Plus, the weather's not great in Buffalo right now. So, uh it's going to be low scoring and in a low scoring game at plus 10, you're looking pretty good. So best bet of the week right there. Jets plus 10. I like it. Wow. Bet of the week. I love it. You're staying one unit on that though. Or are yeah, you going one and a half unit. units too? You want one. Okay. Just one. Um, Thanks for setting me up. That That's nice. kind of why I kept it short. I, I knew you were coming with yours. So, <laughs> well, you said low scoring and you just set me up. What a great co-host what are you i don't know what we call you we're calling you a co-host i don't know what we are yeah yeah either way guys i got a bet of the week and it's the same freaking game we did not plan this but our bet of the weeks are on the same game two different ones i have the under 43 bills and jets minus 110 these are two very good defenses okay the bills struggle sometimes but the jets are elite um and like he said this is all to me it's a big the big part about this game that makes me like it is the weather. There is there should be snow. It's going to turn to rain later. It's in the low to mid 30s. I mean, this game is cold. The weather is ugly. These teams know how to play defense, and it's a divisional game. How many times do I have to talk about divisional unders? I don't have the number in front of me. They they were hitting at 65 percent or something, and then it got up to 70. I don't know the exact number right now. Divisional unders are huge. Two good defenses. Bad weather. How do you not take that? I, in fact, I don't even know why I didn't take it as my bet of the month. I, I have not given out a bet of the month in December. And I'm getting very close as I talk out loud. But I'm going to keep it as the bet of the week, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to do that. The Bills have played three divisional games this year. They've all gone under this 43 total. All of them. Including the last time they played the Jets when they lost to the Jets 20-17. Mm-hmm. to 17. Lost to the Jets. The same team they are now 10-point favorites over. Just see, I got back at you. There you go, Ryan. I just gave you a little, uh, give you a little support there. Um, <laughs> I expect both teams to be a little conservative with their game plans, kind of see who makes the first mistake um, and play defense, especially in this weather. I mean, I can see this game being like 20 to 17 at the, you know what I mean? Like it's going to be low and uh, I like it. Just don't, let's just not get into overtime or anything. I don't want that. So Ugh, you know what bad. the weird thing about this is? This is in Buffalo, right? And they're used to crappy weather. You know, fans helping them get out of snowstorms. It's just ugly in Buffalo at this time of the year. But the team did not build themselves Mm -mm. to play in this weather. They're not a snowy weather team at all or a a freezing cold weather team. That's the the crazy part to me. Like, do they want to play in Buffalo in January? I don't know because they can't really run the ball, right? They're not going to have success against this Jets defense running the ball. Yeah. I so, think just with a big quarterback, big hand, big body, he can kind of take on the weather a little bit. I think that's their only hope, I guess, with the bad weather in Buffalo. Did, was one of your comebacks that he has a big hand? Yeah, it was. Okay, I just I, I thought I heard that, but okay. So, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. They got a quarterback with a big hand. But is it just his right hand or left hand? Like, does he, you know what I mean? His left he hand's like one big hand. a little bit bigger than his right, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. No Good. chance. Good. I have no idea what Ryan just said, but I do understand that they have a rushing quarterback, which helps if that's what you're trying to say, and that can help. But their running game sucks. I don't think they're planning on not having a running game, honestly. It just hasn't worked out. Their O line is not a running run blocking team. So they're not built for this. Under 43 Jets Bills. That is my bet of the week. And that's all six of them. Deep breath. Mm-hmm. Six winners, like always. Like always. I can't even say it without laughing. Come on. Right. The NFL season, if you've been following a lot of handicappers or doing this on your own, it is it is not easy. It is not easy at all. If you are winning money on the NFL season, 
that is pretty uh, pretty good because there's a lot of people losing their butts right now. Do not just go parlay a million teams together. It's just there's just nothing good going to come out of that. It's hard enough to pick one freaking game. Like who had the Rams beating the Raiders tonight as a six six and a half point underdog? Like it's tough out there. But anyways, that's where we're at. Bets recap. Let's bring that sucker up. Don't mind that little red X at the bottom. I don't know who put that there. It's <laughs> someone did. All right, Ryan's bets. We got a little Jets plus ten. Bet of the week against the Bills. Over forty four Panthers Seahawks. Then he's got the under 44 in the Chiefs and Broncos. Yeah, keep that up, Russ. Give us another 7 to 10 points. And then I got Lions team total over 26 and a half. That is such a good bet. My goodness. 49ers minus 3 and a half. They're going to annihilate this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. That's such a good bet, too. Oh, my gosh. It's just crazy. This guy, Steven, over here knows what he's talking about. Third bet, under 43 Jets, Bills, bet of the week. I could have made any of these my bet of the week. I'm going to be honest. I couldn't decide. They're all just so good. You ever just make bets and you're like, man, this is awesome. I'm really good at this. Until the games start. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, yeah, then we got uh, player props coming soon on Saturday. Do not forget that. We're also going to give out a bet for Sunday Night Football. Give out a bet for Monday Night Football. Even though I think I need to stop betting primetime games. As does all of America. Because it's freaking difficult. Jeez, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Anyways. That's the deal. If you are an NBA fan, if you like to bet NBA, and I love it, I like NFL more, but I like betting NBA more because it's a little easier. I am 27 and 14 this year so far in NBA bets. And that's a pretty good record. We just went 3 0. We swept the board. Um, TikTok has been a lot of fun with these NBA bets. A lot of people are, you know, asking questions or giving me their bets and all that kind of stuff. So it's been a lot of fun. Tomorrow's, or yeah, later today is going to be Friday. And they have a lot of games, I think, in the NBA, big slate. So I'm going to give out some NBA bets, and then we're going to dive right back into player props and more NFL bets this weekend. So we got a lot coming. It's been fun talking sports, giving out some bets. We appreciate everyone for all the support on TikTok um, and uh, and just this podcast in general. We're, our next goal after 100 subscribers was 200, and we're almost halfway to 200 now. So we appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun, Ryan. You got anything else? to say for week 14 just keep the comments coming people that's why really why we started this was to interact with all you guys and just have some fun and give out some best 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 bets and win some money so just it was just about the community and having fun so let's keep this going yep i agree exactly comment say anything you want ask questions it's a lot of fun that's it thanks for watching week 14 nfl best bets video and we will see you soon